<laughs> Mahmoud Yakubu. <laughs> An extra man. After four good months. Now, now when you they realize the mistake you made, you told us to go to court. Say all those parties that we are agreed, they should go to court for redress. Eh. So you know, say you can apologize to Nigerians. <laughs> Let me tell you, no matter how you try to apologize, it is too late. We can't accept it. Because you know what you did. <laughs> My people, eh? the way they were done, grad now, the trending information now is that Mahmoud Yakubu, the almighty Anecha man, the evil Anecha man, yes, have come out to apologize to Nigerian youth, to apologize to Pitobi, to apologize to all the parties agreed that he is sorry he didn't know what happened. <laughs> My people, <laughs> you see this story, you see this story, and that child man is cooking up. <laughs> we are not going to accept it. <laughs> you see this pain this man has put us through, imposing leadership upon Nigerians. Mahmoud Yakubu is not going to be well with you. Yes, Nigerians are not happy with you. Nigerians are praying against you. <laughs> My people, they cannot talk everything. What happened in this video? <laughs> I want make una follow me the water. <laughs> and as soon as they watch this video, make una the share. On. All Nigerians need to see this information. <laughs> who is deceiving who? Mahmoud Yakubu. You want to deceive us? <laughs> you are wasting your time. You can't deceive us two times. <laughs> make una just the share this video. <laughs> like your national commissioners, our resident electoral commissioners, the secretary to the commission, the Director General of the Electoral Institute, directors and other senior officials of the Commission, members of the INEC Press Corps, ladies and gentlemen. As always, I welcome you all to this meeting. The purpose is to reflect on the subject matter of the just concluded 2023 general election. Following the conclusion of the election, the time has come for introspection, stock taking, review, and evaluation. Since the conclusion of the election, diverse opinions have been expressed by political parties, candidates, observers, analysts, and the general public on aspects of the elections that took place in February and March. Such diverse opinions should normally be expected, and the Commission welcomes all of them insofar as their purpose is to improve the future conduct of elections and to consolidate our democracy. The Commission has consciously not joined in these commentaries in the immediate aftermath of the election for several reasons. First, our preference is to listen more and draw lessons rather than join in the heated and often emotive discussion on the election. Second, since we plan to conduct our own review of the election, we see no need to preempt the process. Third, the Commission would not want to be seen as defensive or justificatory in joining the ongoing discussions. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, several issues around the election are subjudice, and it is not the intention of the Commission to either undermine or promote the chances of litigants in the various election petition courts beyond what is required of us by the legal process. Indeed, practically anything coming from the Commission could be cited by litigants as either justifying their claims or an indication of bias against them. The foregoing notwithstanding, it is appropriate at this point to make a few broad remarks about the 2023 general election as we commence our review of the same election. 
In doing this, it is necessary to look at the entire process before, during, and after the election to make an informed assessment. Granted that events on election day are probably the most important in terms of optics of elections, it is also very essential to look at the totality of the process. This is necessary if we are to learn the full lessons of the election going forward. Compared to some previous elections, we believe that the 2023 general election was one of the most meticulously prepared for in recent times. Learning from previous experiences, we started preparations immediately after the 2019 general election, carefully ticking the necessary boxes over a four-year period. It is the need to learn from both the positives and the shortcomings that makes the stock taking that we are embarking upon today very essential. Among the positive stories is that the security challenge with threatening to derail the elections did not materialize. Concerns that the polls will be disrupted by the perennial insecurity across the country fizzled out on election day as the elections were largely peaceful. Despite currency and foil challenges and widespread attacks on our personnel and facilities nationwide, the Commission proceeded with the election as scheduled. The first set of elections, the Presidential and National Assembly, held as planned for the first time in the last four general elections conducted in the country. Accreditation using the bimodal voter accreditation system, the BIVAS, has generally been scored very high by voters. Our records show that the success rate of the BIVAS accreditation stands at 98% compared to the smart card readers 29.2% during the 2019 general election. Above all, despite the divergent opinions about the outcome of the election, the overall outlook suggests that it is fair reflection of a complex multi-party democracy. We wish to remind Nigerians that elections were held for a total of 1,491 constituencies made up of one presidential, 28 governorship, 109 senatorial, 360 federal constituencies, and 993 state assembly seats. Our record shows that these elections have produced the most diverse outcomes um, ever produced since 1999. Today, five political parties produced state governors, seven parties won senatorial seats, eight are represented in the House of Representatives, and nine in the state houses of assembly. Clearly, the 10th National Assembly is certainly the most diverse in party representation since 1999. In some states around the country, different political parties control the legislative and executive arms of government. What is clear from this record also is that the days of single party dominance of our national politics are probably gone. Furthermore, many prominent candidates lost in the constituencies they contested, and political parties lost in some of their presumed strongholds. Still, we must acknowledge that there were some challenges which were structural, infrastructural, and human in nature. Indeed, it is in furtherance of our determination to address the challenges as we prepare for future elections that the Commission is commencing its post-election review engagements today. We are presently looking at all the evidence of infractions during the election, including the prosecution of electoral offenders. We are looking at the activities of all actors involved in the election, including some of our high-ranking officials. I can confirm that the Nigeria police concluded its investigation of the conduct of our resident electoral commissioner in Adamawa State and submitted the case file to us appropriate action will be taken in a matter of days and Nigerians will be fully informed. I can also confirm that we have received 215 case files from the Nigeria police 
following their arrest and the conclusion of investigation into electoral offenses arising from the 2023 general election. We are working with the Nigerian Bar Association, the NBA, to prosecute the alleged offenders. Already, the Bar Association has submitted a list of 427 lawyers across the country who have volunteered to render pro bono services to the Commission. They are not charging legal fees, but by mutual agreement, the Commission will provide a token amount to cover for filing uh, fees and other expenses. We are grateful to the Nigerian Bar Association. We are grateful to the Nigerian Bar Association and its president, Yakub Mekeu, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, for this historic collaboration. Similarly, we are working with the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission and the Independent Corrupt Practices Commission on the prosecution of cases relating to vote buying and associated violations. In the next few weeks, several internal debriefing meetings will be held, culminating in engagements with stakeholders. I implore the resident electoral commissioners as senior officials of the commission to lead the discussion on all aspects of the election, from preparations, conduct, and aftermath, frankly and constructively. Among other issues, I expect you to cover such specific areas as one, operational processes for the continuous voter registration and the general election, including planning, organization, coordination, and evaluation of activities, focusing particularly on such specific issues as the issuance of voters' cards, logistics, delivery of materials, deployment of personnel, and so on and so forth. Number two, legal framework for the conduct of elections with a view to addressing any key legal challenges that may have arisen prior to the 2023 general election, which were not envisaged before the election. Three, technologies deployed in the electoral process, including INEC voter enrollment device, the IVED, the INEC result viewing portal, the IREV, by model voter accreditation system, the BEAVERS, party nomination portal, observers, media, and polling stroke collection agents accreditation portals, focusing particularly on their performance. Four, effectiveness of, of, of overall administrative procedures and channels within the commission in the coordination and execution of pre-election, election, and post-election activities. Five, political party registration, party primaries and nomination of candidates for the 2023 general election, as well as monitoring of the processes. Six, process of recruitment, training, deployment, and performance of all categories of ad hoc staff during the continuous voter registration exercise and the general election. And seven, strengthening the Commission's cooperation and relations with other bodies, including ministries, departments, and agencies, and non-governmental organizations, and any other issues in the electoral process that are likely to impact on the work of the Commission in future. In line with our policy, at the end of the internal review and engagement with stakeholders, a comprehensive report will be published by the Commission. Furthermore, the Commission has so far received reports from 54 accredited national and international observers who will give equal prominence to all the reports and review them in a holistic manner to ensure that necessary lessons are learned from their conclusions and recommendations. As a Commission, we hope to continue to count on the support of stakeholders to improve the electoral process in Nigeria. Our work in INEC is enormous. As resident electoral commissioners, you are no doubt aware that there is no election season in Nigeria any longer. Numerous off-cycle and by-elections are held throughout the period between one general election and another. 
even as we commence our review of the conduct of the 2023 general election, and barely a few weeks after the inauguration of the National and State Houses of Assembly, we are already confronted with four by-elections as a result of resignation in the case of Surulere 1 Federal Constituency of Lagos State and death in respect of Jalingo Yorozing Federal Constituency of Taraba State, Chibok State Constituency of Borno State, and Chukun State Constituency of Kaduna State. Furthermore, the Commission is preparing for three off-cycle governorship elections in Bayelsa, Imo, and Kogi states, which are scheduled for the 11th of November 2023. We have already published the final list of candidates for the elections, and campaign in public officially commenced on the 14th of June 2023. The Commission will soon commence the regular stakeholder engagements ahead of the elections. Let me at this point specifically reiterate to the resident electoral commissioners that we are recommending, we are commencing these debriefings with you because you are central to the conduct of elections. Many of you performed very well during the general election under extremely challenging circumstances. I commend you for that. However, However, a few of you did not properly manage the tasks lawfully bestowed upon you for which the Commission has taken some administrative action. And that's why some of you, the resident electoral commissioners, are not at this meeting today. I urge you to continue to remain loyal to your oath of office. Once again, I welcome you all to this meeting and I look forward to frank discussion.